Hi, everyone. This is Nicole from Austrek. I am here with a few people from Deakin. So we have Brie Nickel, who is a current student. She's a second year student in the MD at Deakin. We have Vanessa, who is a recruitment coordinator and a lecturer at the university. And we also have Tori, who is our recruitment rep uh, for the university in North America as well. Thanks so much, Nicole. No um, so welcome, everyone. Um, we're going to have a little bit of, of a chat about you know, what Deakin is about, what we're like as a university, um, and a little bit about our program and the lifestyle that you might have at Deakin. Um, because really, the Austrek crew can help you with all of those questions around requirements, all of the paperwork and things. Um, but this is really an opportunity for you to get to know us as people, um, as an institution and, and help you make that decision about whether or not Deacon's the right choice for you. Uh, so if you do have any questions during the next sort of 15 minutes, let us know um, and we'll be happy to have a chat with you about them. But first, um, Bree, do you want to tell us a little bit about, um, I guess, why you ended up picking Deacon and a little bit about your experience so far? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, just over two years ago, I was in your guys' seat, just trying to figure out where I best fit um, in the Australia picture. Um, I had an interview with the Deacon crew and absolutely fell in love with them. They were just like, wanting to know me as people. Um, they were just super interesting and like in, interested in me. They weren't interested in my marks because I could already tell that I was a good student. They were just really interested in getting to know who I was. And they really fostered that like family and inclusion vibe. And for me, that's something that really resonated with me. I know with us moving so far away from home, you know, our med school classmates, those are our tribe, that's our people. Um, and I just felt like Deacon was really great at surrounding us with, you know, love and support and just making us all feel, um, you know, one big happy family. Um, and I think that goes to show with the type of applicants that they tend to have within their program, it really reflects that very uh, teamwork, community-based um, kind of uh, frame of thought that they have um, and that they like to kind of look for for recruits. Um, uh, the other schools are great as well, but Deacon just gave me like such a vibe. I was like, oh, I just have to be a part of this. Um, and I'm so happy I am. I'm, you know, two years in or one and a half years in getting ready to go into clinical schools. And I just feel so supported on every transition that we've ever made. Um, even with COVID, obviously having to deal with the ups and downs of that. And like my classmates have just been so amazing. Like I honestly cannot find a nicer group of people. Like everyone is so kind to each other. Everyone wants to be friends. Um, we wrote an exam and we all just like applauded everyone as we all stood up to go get in line for our exams. Like it is very inclusive and very, just like, I'd say like easygoing in a way too. Like they want you to be, to do well academically, but they also really stress that, you know, you should be your own person and have a life outside of medicine. And they really stress that like camaraderie and kind of finding your own, your own thing apart from medicine. So I really, really enjoyed that. Cause I think some schools really, you know, drill into you that you got to be like hundred percent focused and you do sometimes have to be hundred percent focused, but also sometimes you got to have that like fun time and play time and they definitely you know make it fun at the university as well definitely balance is really important so um definitely something that we try to foster and glad to hear that you're finding that with the program um so i guess with uh what was i going to say a few of the sort of pros and cons of, of the program you know we want people to make sure that they're getting that honest advice is there anything that you don't particularly like about our program hmm mm. i think if you are really into anatomy like and that is like the number one thing you want to be doing um we have a great anatomy program but we're definitely not as intense in anatomy as some other programs are. So for me, that is absolutely fine. Um, but I have a friend and he was obsessed with anatomy. And so he found a program that was like super anatomy heavy. And like that just totally works really well for him. Um, so if that's something that you really like to do, 
Um, I think the other thing that maybe I'm kind of gaining an appreciation for now is we do some clinical skills throughout the year, obviously having been interrupted kind of at this point. Um, but really at the end of second year, we just have this huge intensive of six weeks where like all we do is clinical stuff. So, um, through the year, you might feel like you're not doing as much as you could be, or you should be, but really in those last six weeks, they like really get our skills up and kind of ready to go into clinic. So I think at the beginning, I felt like that was maybe a downside, but as I'm getting into second year, I can kind of see how they've organized things and we're still getting kind of caught up um, to where I feel like we should be at this point. Um, You've just gone into transition to clinical practice, which is aptly named. So we're getting you all up to speed on that. Um, how have you found having that split between having sort of the un, um, sort of the on-campus pre-clinical side of things, and then having um, going in now to sort of your two years in the clinic? How are you feeling about that? Oh, I'm really excited. Um, I think because we're just all a bit done with the same mundane that we've been working through, um, particularly with all of us being online, like we're all so excited to talk to normal people face to face as much as possible. Um, I think you're always a little bit nervous, right? Like every time we, we've only done simulations or we only practice with each other. So I think that moving next step to like, now we actually get to be part of someone's care team and like progress them, their health. Um, so I think that's like a bit, you know, daunting a little bit. Cause you're like, obviously we're lowest on the totem pole. Like nothing we say really has a lot of weight, but it's still the fact that we get to like be a part of that team and like present to um, clinicians and like show them our train of thought and do procedures. So as I'm excited for it, but I'm definitely a little nervous for that as well. Um, and my first rotation is surgery. So like, I just get like thrown straight into the deep end of like, here you go. And I was chatting with the group yesterday about what to expect. And he was like, we teach from this textbook and shows another one. And we teach from this one. So get to know it. And you'll know these exams. And I'm like, ah, there's so much. <laughs> Thankfully, like all of our clinical schools are, are pretty awesome with supporting their students, but I know that you're heading to our Warnable campus uh, or our mm -hmm. Warnable hospitals, so who are very popular with our international students and making sure that, A, they're supported in the clinic, but also making sure that you know where all the good coffee spots are, which is important, especially when you're going straight into surgery. 100%. Yeah, the crew seems amazing there. Like, I mean, every... Um, clinical site has an amazing like group of people. Um, Warnable specifically for me, I just love that it was a smaller cohort. They're super family oriented, super group oriented. And even just in our um, intro yesterday that we had, it's just, there are so many touch points that they have with us. I was actually shocked. Like, I just kind of imagined that we'd only have a few and like, they're like, oh, we touch point here. We do this, we do this, we do this. We check you here. And like, I'm almost a little overwhelmed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be under like the watch for so, for so long. <laughs> it can feel a little bit like that with everyone there, but hopefully that'll be great for your clinical learning. Um, look, we're about the halfway point. Do we want to switch the tables and you can ask me some tricky questions as sort of the academic <laughs> slash recruitment person? There we go. Okay. So maybe let's start off with, um, what is Deacon looking for in their applicants? Excellent question. Uh, so similar to what you spoke about before, we're looking for people that have that really community minded spirit. Um, so people who want to work as part of a team, people who are about collaboration um, and, and people who really want to give back to communities. Um, medicine is so important for, you know, keeping people well, um, not just, you know, treating them once they become unwell. Um, so really those people that want to work in community um, and, and be supportive of their peers is really important for us. Um, and we're also looking for people that are, you know, good communicators that want to, you know, develop those what we'd call soft skills throughout the program. Um, like we know that you're good academically, otherwise you probably wouldn't be applying for a medical program. Um, and, 
but there's things that we can't necessarily teach you along the way. So things like being that empathetic practitioner is something that you bring to the table. Um, being someone who can see what's happening with others or has that natural interest in, in wanting to help others is really important for us. So that's probably the main thing we're looking for. Um, we also really like talking to people that have a real interest in working with marginalised groups or rural communities um, because that's something that our medical school has a big focus on. So a really big focus on Indigenous health, really big focus on rural health because that's why our school was set up to really help with shortages of workforce in those communities. So uh, looking for people with a bit of an interest in that space as well. Not to say that, you know, if that's not your driving interest, you know, still have a chat to us because it takes all types to do medicine. Um, and certainly we have a lot of folks that are still based in urban or metro areas, um, but, but certainly uh, they still have an understanding of some of those components. And we do have quite um, a lot of different um, underrepresented groups, even out in our urban and metro areas as well. So really important to make sure that we're still helping those communities. I like it. Um, what would you say is Deacon's, the program at Deacon, what is its biggest strength? Biggest strength? Uh, look, there's a couple of them, um, but I think one of the things that we have that a lot of programs don't necessarily have is this increasing focus on integration of um, public health, ethics, law and professionalism within the other aspects of the program, um, particularly through our problem-based learning program. Um, having a small cohort, um, being a relatively new medical program means that we can really adapt to those types of things as we go um, and make changes, which is really important. Um, and that's led to us making sure that those themes around, you know, social justice and, and practicing ethically and, and helping our communities really gets woven through our curriculum, um, you know, within all of the clinical practice and the medical science that you need to know. Um, so I think that's a real strength that you do get that more of a holistic overview of health and of medicine while you're practicing, um, rather than it being siloed. So that's not to say we still have room to grow in that space for sure um, but it is something that we're constantly striving towards is to really make sure that students get that overview of, of everything that's involved in um, in helping our patients um, and you were saying that we have a small cohort could you yes. speak on so, how big we've got and how many internationals we typically have um, so usually we have between 140 and 150 students in each year level. Um, so that can sound like a big number, but, you know, it's still small enough that we get to know everyone on a first name basis. So I think Anna in the main chat before referred to me as Professor Vaughan, which is just terrifying um, because everyone just calls me Vanessa um, or V or, you know, you with the face. Um, so it, it's, um, we get to know everyone, not just, you know, the students getting to know each other, but we get to know the students as well. Um, and a lot of our time is actually spent in smaller groups with our problem-based learning, team-based learning, um, practical and workshop classes and things like that. So it, it, it's rare that we'd have the whole 150 students in the cohort together at the same time, um, much more time spent in smaller groups. Um, in terms of how many international students, we take up to 20 international students per year. Um, and from a really diverse range of you know backgrounds um, both in terms of you know where you're from but also the academic background that you come from um, we do get a lot of Canadians in the program um, so we've spent a lot of time uh, with our Canadian applicants and students um, but certainly we've got a pretty diverse cohort so even with our domestic students a lot of those are first generation Australians um, so their families ha have migrated and then joined our program Nicole coming back online means that we only have about a minute left. Um, so I will just say if anyone wants to ask any questions that we haven't covered, um, do feel free to jump into our chat room. Um, I'll be on there and Tori will be on there for a little while yet. Um, and we're happy to keep talking. Any last minute questions, Brie, before we, before we wrap up? Um, favorite coffee place in Geelong? Oh. In Geelong, uh, my favourite is 
box office, um, which is in Geelong West. Great brunch menu, really nice coffee, and just a good chill crew. Um, good vibe. And, and they're happy to have dogs in as well, which is good for me because I've got two cuddly dogs who just love going out. Uh, so that's probably my favourite place. And then uh, in Geelong and then in Torquay, which is 20 minutes down the road at the beach, my new favourite is Salty Dog because, again, dogs everywhere and also really good coffee. So. <laughs> the coffee culture here is amazing. It is on point. So good. So And always... <laughs> Always, we have recommendations for you if you come to Shalom. Nicole, I think that wraps it up for us. That does. Thank you so much, Tori and Vanessa and Brie. Um, just like pleasure. Vanessa said, if you have questions, please uh, visit the Deacon Room and they will answer them for you. Thanks That's so much. It. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Bye.